Young age, there's been some disappointment in his development, but with his work ethic, I think it's short-lived. Another strong rebound, just like we've gotten used to seeing from them today. Yeah, one or two more of those, and this lead will be double digits. And it's Johnson with the jam. You know, regardless of who starts the break, it seems like he's usually the one to finish it. And that's because of how well he attacks the rim on the dead run. Now here's West. No scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. The shot, no good. You know, guys, if he does his work early, he knows when he gets in a good position, his size gives him a big edge on the glass. Well, his shot's been off today, no question. He's not the guy they're going to want to look to if they want to keep this lead where it is. Now here's Parker following the miss by Eric Bledsoe. Fires the three. Cousins pulls it in. Cousins has got his fifth rebound right now in the game. And there's the whistle. That goes on the quick. That's his first foul. And it's Bledsoe off the drive. And the first half ends in a close one. Portland out in front. They lead by five. Live from the AT&T Center in San Antonio, you're watching 2K Sports. And it's been a back-and-forth game so far with no ground given through the first half. Third quarter starting here now. Here's Bloodsoe. Here's who Terry Stotts is starting the second half with. They've got Bloodsoe. DeMarcus Cousins out there with Rust. Then there's J.R. Smith. And it's Igudala in at the three spot. Portland shooting their third and fourth free throw shot to the night. And that one falls for DeMarcus Cousins. After two year absence from the playoffs, the Portland Trail Blazers able to get back into it last year to face Houston in the 4 5 seeded matchup. And they jockeyed as hard as they could to get that home court advantage, but just couldn't quite grab hold of it. Still, they were able to get by a very tough Houston team in round one. A chance here to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Doris Burke. Hi, Doris. Well, guys, Coach Greg Popovich, the reigning coach of the year, a big part of his approach is empowering players. He says, quote, it's a player's game, and they've got to take charge. Rather than try to manipulate them, he said, it's a great feeling when players get together and do things as a group. Kevin? Thanks, Doris. You know, giving his players room to lead and allowing them to take ownership, I mean, I think that's part of the genius of Popovich. Get by Houston with an incredible shot with that, but, you know, things were different when they ran into the machine known as the San Antonio Spurs in the second round. Iguodala outside. Davis with the block. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Trailblazers will retain possession. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Spurs will take it. And as you said about Portland, they just couldn't deal with the Spurs over the course of a series and ended up out after the second round. Still a really nice showing from a young team with a lot of upside. And Plunzo with the stuff. And unfortunately, we've seen a few too many of those. A lack of concentration and alertness, a turnover, and an easy bucket the other way in transition. And if we see a few more of them, this game could be in danger of getting out of hand quickly. Parker with it. Eric Bledso covering. Down to five on the shot clock. Good on that shot, and with that, the Trailblazer lead is cut down now to just six in the basket from Tony Parker. Here's Iguodala. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. The feed now to Cousins. Rebound by Johnson. And a nice job there defensively, just getting a hand up enough to bother the shot. 
Yeah, that was very nice. Impressive. It made it a much more difficult shot. And then Cousins with the dunk. And that's the kind of play you just do not want to give up defensively. You lose the possession and give up a quick two at the other end. That's losing basketball. And especially when you can't afford to give up any buckets, that pushes this lead up instead of going the other way. They get it again. It's been a real difficult game for him offensively, and it's costly. Not watching the line there. That'll be a backcourt violation. Brewer is checked in for Portland. A touch over two and a half minutes of basketball played here in the third quarter. Parker dishes to Davis. Abdul Jabbar trying to free himself up. That one's in there. The Trailblazer lead is cut down now to just six points with that basket from Anthony Davis. I think for a while, Clark, teams looked at Iguodala and saw his talent and what he could do on the floor, and they wanted him to be a centerpiece. Now that he's been in the league this long, and as a vet, he seems almost better suited as a complimentary piece. What, I wouldn't disagree with that. I mean, not everybody can be the main focal point of a team. And that's no knock on Iguodala. I mean, I think he's terrific. He does a little bit of everything, does it all well. And I understand he's really a high-quality guy and teammate. And he's very much more of a playmaker than a scorer, even though he can look dominant with the ball in his hands at times. And with Iguodala comfortable in its role playing as a sidekick, it, it makes sense because he modeled his game so closely after Pippen when he was growing up. Very much cut out of the same cloth. Parker with Eric Bledsoe covering. Abdul Jabbar passes to Davis. Portland grabs the miss. Smith's got three rebounds now in this one. Scooped up. Here's Davis. And they finally get it to go. A full night's work on the boards in one trip down the floor. It's stolen by Davis. And that one's good. Parker. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any agenda. It's hard to overstate all the points they've scored on assists today. Beautiful to watch. Here's Cousins. And the layup falls. Cousins has got six points in the quarter. You know, final thought here on Eagle Dollar. The more I think about what you said about him and Pippen, they're similar in length. Their ability, to, their versatility um, defensively is a talent that I think they both have in addition to being able to make plays for others. I think it's a reasonable comparison, actually quite apt when you uh, look at those two guys. And it's slammed in by Brewer. How about that fantastic finish and the aggressive move, too, Kevin? Trying to send a message, Clark, with that slam, I think. Well, that's how you send it. Two hands and hammer it down. Feels like a flip has been switched at halftime because both teams now really getting after it. And it's been a fun half of basketball, Steve. No good from Bledsoe. Obviously, they're evenly matched teams on the inside. The rebound numbers are very even. Yeah, I've been impressed with just both teams' energy, just really working hard on the board. Here's Bledsoe following the bucket by the Spurs. Smith wide open. He fires. And Brewer kicks to Cousins for three. Smith and Bledsoe. Here we go. Good D by Parker. You see the defenders get out of his way a lot of times when he's on his way to the bucket, but not that time. Bucket. Some good opportunities for himself and made the. Well, what can you say about Spurs at home? I mean, they've been dominant here for so long. It's a shock whenever they lose at home. Now here's Cousins. He's got ten. Clock at four. No good from Bledsoe. Well, he won't miss many of those, especially with the defender not in the best of positions there. The offensive rebound. Johnson with it. Now Smith defending. Parker's shot is off. 
Well contested shot, and they did an excellent not fouling the shooter. Defense is about effort and commitment and discipline. He's a good defender because of those things. And a moment here to take a look at some of the hustle stats for the Spurs. And they continue to run and gun throughout the game, guys. Something else they've done is force a lot of mistakes defensively, and they've been turning those turnovers into points. So Portland ends up going with the new group. Matthews, no one around him. Portland again missing. The Spurs were dominant at home once again, as you mentioned, guys. 32 wins for them, Steve, and they shot great, absolutely great in this building. Well, you don't win 50 games for 15 straight years, Kevin, without being dominant at home, and that's what the Spurs have done. So they just get the job done. I mean, they're tough to beat here in San Antonio, and obviously a wonderful shooting ball club. Two shots. So how about Anthony Davis in this one? He's got 21 points, and his two blocks have given them a lift defensively. Well, you have to protect the rim, Clark. You know that. And when you do that as well as he has today, it really bodes well for your team. Here's Napier. He kicks to Mahimi. Matthews, no one around him. And it's Matthews again missing. Another rebound gobbled up there, pounding the boards. And a big part of the league, guys, is because of the work they've done on the glass. I mean, they have the lead because they've rebounded well. Cantor, the pass to Napier. Matthews, a screen on Brooks. For three, Richmond. Their offense seems completely out of sync here. They're on the wrong end of a big run. And then at the other end is... Been bucket after bucket after bucket, giving up a... Shots continuing to fall as we conclude the third quarter. Both teams putting up points. Spurs lead by eight. And we'll have the start of a fourth quarter for you as soon as we get back from this short break. Michael Kid Gilchrist out there with Paul Milson. Then there's Sergey Karasov. Then it's Brooks. And it's Barnes. And it's the three, the small forward. That's the San Antonio five. Well, it's kind of been the story here today, hasn't it, Clark? Trailblazers trailed by ten. Snatched up. Kid Gilchrist with the steal. Brooks kicks to Millsap. Shot from 16. And it's good. Assisting on the play was Brooks. Brooks has got four assists in the game. Napier passes to Matthews. And the dunk to finish it off. A beauty. Cutting into the lead with a huge one-hand throwdown. That's how to get your team back into it. Yes, yeah, sir. That, that may put a little life back into this team. Three on three. Matthews left side. Gets a very good look and converts. Matthews has got four points in the quarter. Well, you know, he has shot the ball well, but it has not been contagious. I mean, his teammates, they haven't had the same groove, and that's why we're looking at this result so far. There's the dish to Barnes, and there's the foul. It goes on Wesley Matthews. That is his first foul of the game. Outside Millsap. They get it back. Out to Brooks. That one wide left. You know, when the shot's not there for you, you've just got to recognize it and move the ball on. Yeah, I think he had tunnel vision right there. His only thought was to shoot it, no matter what else was going on. Hit his foot. And they're saying he kicked the ball. Harrison Barnes with the foul. That is his first foul of the game. Now, here's Cantor. Tight defense on him. 
Richmond with it. He's picked up by Millsap. Clock at four. Napier kicks to Matthews. And that one goes long. Spurs leading by eight. From deep three-point range. That's good. He's got 21. Well, halftime was exactly what they needed as they have shot the ball much better coming out of the break. And yeah, they have looked a lot better this half. I don't know what it was. Um, perhaps they changed the rims, unbeknownst to us, but something changed. And I think Doris Burke has something for us right now. Doris? Hey, Kevin, during that last break, I heard Terry Stotts as he addressed his team. He didn't exactly take it easy on them, saying, how much do you want it? Don't tell me. Show me out there. We have to play better. We have to play harder if we're going to come back. Guys? He feeds it to Cantor. Another shot. That's good on the jump shot. Mid-range jumper becomes a pretty high percentage shot for him when he has that kind of space. Brooks outside. To the left side wing. And stolen by Napier. And that one's good. And now it's only a five-point Spurs lead. Well, we've seen that more than a few times. An easy bucket in the lane. Yeah, the interior defense simply has been lifeless. And the shot is good. You know, everybody seems to be sleepwalking out there on defense, and it's been that way, guys, ever since they came out of the halftime locker room. Richmond kicks to Mahimi. San Antonio with the rebound. They've held a 12-point lead earlier. Out of bounds, Portland takes possession. So both teams changing it up here. Trailblazers trail by seven. Blutso outside. In the corner, Igudala with it. And there's the whistle. Goes on the quick. And that'll be his third foul so far. The Trailblazers making a switch here. Richmond's checked in. The shot by Bloodso. Nobody around. Drills it from outside. He's too dangerous a shooter to leave alone behind the arc. Johnson goes in. Fast to Abdul Jabbar. And he throws it down hard with one hand. Well, now they're just going to town on him. Yeah, you'd think these defenders would have done a little more to put a stop to that stuff, Kevin, but so far, no go. Well, a phenomenal aerial assault there, fellas. That is good, and the Spurs lead is cut down to four on the bucket from West. Parker kicks to Davis. Right side, Davis. It's Davis on the wing. And it's good in the assist by Parker. 24 points for Anthony Davis. He's got so much junk in his trunk. He'll find a way to hurt you. Shot's good by Bloodsoe. They'll be counting on even more points from him. That's essential if they're going to pull this game out. It's Parker with the drive. Davis. And he dunks it down. Great second half. I mean, he came out of that locker room ready to play. Bloodsoe dishes to Richmond. Back to Bloodsoe. There's the triple. And it's Anthony Davis with the rebound. Davis has got rebound number nine now. What an effort here tonight. Johnson again. Smith. And there's the whistle. That goes on the quick. That's his fourth foul of the contest. It's his fourth foul, and I'm sure he picked it up a little earlier than he would have liked. West setting the pick for Cousins. Smith, no good. I don't like throwing up long-range threes at this point. You've got to get better looks to try to close this gap. Nobody near Parker. It's tipped. Richmond with the steal. Smith with a wide open look. Here's Cousins. 
Abdul Jabbar with the block. One thirty left to play in the final quarter. Takes a shot at the elbow. The shot no good. And it's Portland the other way. Bledsoe against Sparkle. Good game for Bledsoe. He's got 16 points, and he's knocked down a pair of three-pointers in this game, too. Well, they might want to think about setting a few more screens for him, too. Try to give him another open look or two. He gets the first, and that brings them within five. And Eric Bledsoe drops them both. Nice work there. This is a point in the game where if you've got a chance to close the gap, you've got to do it. Spurs have gone 7 of 13 from the field here in the fourth. Parker kicks to Johnson. That drops, and it comes off an assist from Parker. And the Spurs lead by six. So the only tough part of that basket for him was getting into such good position. The rest of it seemed easy. The offense is getting right to the rim, but at least they saved the layup with the foul. That's old school basketball rules. I mean, at the end of the day, no easy layup. Earn it from the line. He hits both from the strike. He's done a much better job of getting to the line here. Aggressively taking it inside and not shying away from contact. I thought he was settling a bit in the first. And the pass to Johnson. Johnson left side. The shot is no good. Nice D from Cousins. The Trailblazers shoot for the game at 42%. For three, Richmond sinks it. And what a sensational bucket to bring them within one. Oh, that is a massive shot. You know it is. He's stepping right into the spotlight. Four seconds separating the shot and game clocks. And an intentional foul right there. That's right. No other option but to foul and hope for some misses. Yep, you got to extend the game here. Try to keep that clock from moving. And he hits both free throws here. So now it's a three-point game. That last free throw was critical. Their only choice now is to go for the three to tie. Now a timeout called by Portland. They're behind by three. There's 18 seconds left in the fourth. Guys, what do you think? Well, down three, you don't necessarily have to go for the three. You could go for the quick bucket and then the foul. I'm not sure. I mean, in this situation, I think they should look for the three, Steve. I mean, try to tie this thing up. You've got three-point shooters. Let it fly. For three, Bledsoe. Yes! And, oh, that was an enormous three-pointer. There's no doubt about it. Eric Bledsoe has got the touch. He's feeling it. From about 16... Called by Portland. They're losing by two. One second left here in the fourth quarter. What's your take, guys? With under two seconds remaining, you've got to hurry it up. Get the ball up quickly and take one dribble and get it to the rim. For the win. Oh, the all or nothing shot. No good. And so it's San Antonio who straight by with the win. Well, they don't get much more exciting than that, Clark. They sure don't. And when it was gut check time, this team kept their composure, kept their emotions in check, and got it done. Thank you for joining us for this presentation of the NBA on 2K Sports. For Clark, Stephen Doris, and the rest of the crew, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Last but not least, here is your Jordan player of the game, Anthony Davis.